We're talking about the superpower of handling rejection and four tactics to easier overcome this rejection. We're going to be diving in. Do you want blissful balance in your personal and professional life? Great. What's up, guys? My name is Kerry Jack, and I want to help you. Happy hustle, a life you love, one full of passion, purpose, and positive impact. I'm a lifestyle entrepreneur, a professional model slash actor, a digital marketing specialist, a podcast host, author, a biohacker, an eco warrior, a martial artist, a hippie cowboy, and a humanitarian. My goal is to educate, inspire, and entertain you to live a life of passion, purpose, and positive impact. It is time to happy hustle your dream reality. The superpower of handling rejection. I know, rejection strikes. It's a part of the game. When you're an aspiring entrepreneur or an entrepreneur or a happy hustler out there really striving for your dream reality, you're going to face rejection. You're going to have adversity strike, but you need to know how to actually overcome it. So I want to share with you four tactics on how I've learned to overcome rejection and how you can too. What's up, guys? My name is Kerry Jack. I am a lifestyle entrepreneur and author and founder of The Happy Hustle, and I want to share with you this concept of handling rejection and how it can actually be a superpower for you if leveraged properly. Now, you might not know this, but I actually was a professional actor and model back in my prime. I know now I'm quite hairy and uh, look a little bit more like a mountain man slash, uh, you know, silverback gorilla. Um, Maybe not so much gorilla, but anyway, I I grew out the beard and, you know, I kind of I've stopped modeling and acting regularly. My agents will call me from here uh, from time to time. And, and, you know, if it's a good gig, I'll take it. But now I'm more focused on my business, my family, and really just, you know, my freedom. So there was a time, though, when rejection, a part of the entertainment industry, was my everyday reality. Because you... If you don't know, a part of the entertainment industry is one of the highest unemployment rates out of any industry. Nine out of 10 actors or models every single day are not working. That's a ridiculous amount of unemployment. And it's largely because there's more talent than there are opportunities. Now, this means that you actually are getting rejected roughly 80% of the time. Even in business, in life, in, in dating, all of the the greatest things that you've ever accomplished and that I've ever accomplished typically didn't come easy. You got rejected, you had to iterate, you had to, you know, evolve and then you learn from it. That's what happens, you know, in the entertainment world, that's what happens in business, that's what what happens in life. Now, when I was acting and modeling, I actually realized that there was a cheat code for me to actually book more work. And that cheat code I want to share with you right now. And it might surprise you a little bit. It might actually um, be quite intuitive. Who knows your perspective on it? But for me, it was a it was a light bulb moment. Okay. And it really took its shape when I was in Miami. As a professional actor model, I was actually represented by Wilhelmina and Next Models and and some of the biggest talent agencies in the entire world. And that was after, you know, years and years of trial and error to attain this representation. I finally achieved it, which boosted my daily rate to, you know, a couple grand just for an eight hour day, just to smile in front of the camera. And then I also had um, you know, back end residuals based on whatever the gig was. So it, it was a lucrative business. Now, I realized that I would go to a casting and a casting for those of you who don't know is where let's say a client goes through a middleman like a, a casting agency to essentially, you know, source talent, models, actors, etc. for their upcoming commercial or movie or, you know, whatever. I mean, maybe it's a magazine print ad. It just depends. But they would go through a casting agency and the casting agency would then call the different talent um, agencies and the talent agencies would then email or call or text us the talent and say, hey, you have a casting 
you know, it's at this address, it's for this client, maybe it was for, you know, Jeep or Home Depot or Corona, and they would tell you the specs and what you should wear, and then you'd go there, and then you'd wait in line with all the other talent that looked quite similar to you, <laughs> and you'd basically just be hanging out with your competition, and you'd be, you know, shooting the shit. A lot of them I'm close friends with oftentimes, you know, we, a couple of them I'd even live with. We had like a whole model and actor house that at one point I'd lived with. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of a funny industry in that sense. But then you get your time slot and, you know, you get in front of the clients and the production um, and the ad agency. And then the casting director will turn on the camera. They'll ask you your name, do your slate, you know, turn left, right, et cetera. And then they'll give you a couple of lines. Just depends on the casting. Maybe they'll make you dance. Maybe they'll ask you, hey, what's your favorite thing to do? They want to see your personality. But this is basically how it goes. You know, you're you're out there competing for work every single day. Like you got to win the job. Every day is a job interview. So you can imagine this is full of rejection. This this industry, right? This lifestyle. So I was getting rejected every single day, sometimes, you know, multiple times a day, just because I would have multiple castings and it's just a part of it. And I really realized how to take it in stride and how to actually learn from it. And the actual, you know, light bulb moment for me was when I started getting feedback and this was huge. I was like, okay, I need to know why I didn't book this job or why I did book this job. So I started bringing these little surveys, which were, you know, basically, what should I start doing, stop doing and keep doing three questions. And I would just, hey, you know, real quick, do you mind if, uh, you know, you just fill this out for me, client or casting director or whatever, you know, oftentimes they got like a lot of people, so they didn't have time to really get into details on, you know, what they liked and didn't like, but I would get, you know, feedback. And then I actually evolved this with my brother and business partner into a, um, into an app. It was an algorithm that we created. So not only was it like, you know, what should I start doing, stop doing, keep doing, but then we would ask questions and, and we would circle, you know, ask like circle the adjective that best describes our performance. And then we would put a numerical value around that specific adjective that was selected. And then that would get input into a score. And then you would have a score for your performance. I didn't really see it at the time, but this actually turned into my tech company in New York City. And we just grew this algorithm. And then investors started to see it as, oh, you know what? They are, they're able to quantify feedback. This could work in the job interview industry. This could work in the dating industry. There was a lot of merit to being able to quantify feedback. And our whole slogan was, in order to grow, you need to know. This was one of my first like legit tech companies that I actually was pounding the pavement. This is actually when I burnt out in New York City. But that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is all of the rejection around this industry and how I was handling it. The feedback piece was huge because I started learning what actually was working and what wasn't. And then I could iterate and evolve. So that is how I actually went from, you know, booking a couple jobs here, a couple jobs there to actually being one of the highest paid, most booked talent in the industry for what I was doing. You know, I had a specific like, you know, look and feel that people just knew that I would come and deliver. I had three and a half years of Second City Improv training in Chicago, you know, because I, I did a lot of work, you know, in improv comedy. And I also like I could I was quick on the fly, like just to come up with, you know, random things. And so people liked that I could I could not just, you know, be just a, like a pretty face quote unquote, back when I had one, uh, but more so I had some wit and I was able to, you know, um, be a spokesman for their brand. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Apologies for interrupting your programming, but I have to tell you the best investment you can make in yourself is one in which helps you acquires skills. You've probably heard people talk about, oh, just invest in yourself and you'll be successful. Yes, that's true to a degree, but you have to invest in skills that will ultimately help you achieve your desired results. And I think one of the best skills one can possess, be it an entrepreneur or an aspiring entrepreneur, is the sales sword. 
really knowing how to sell, utilizing pressure-free persuasion, which will make you more money and more impact. Now, if you want to know how to sell more efficiently and effectively, I just launched a sales course called The Proven Roadmap Process to Selling Millions of Dollars and Helping You to Increase Your Conversions Guaranteed. And you can get access to this new sales course that The Happy Hustle is launching at thehappyhustle.com forward slash sales. And if you act fast, you'll get it at the lowest price it'll ever be available because we are launching it and we want to gain amazing testimonials and social proof to further share this knowledge. So if you act fast, you can get it at the lowest price it'll ever be. That's at thehappyhustle.com forward slash sales. Now let's get back to this episode. And this was really a, a catalyst moment for me because I started to use the impact um, that these surveys were having on me to then leverage it with other friends of mine and other talent that wanted to grow and handle rejection more efficiently and essentially learn from the experience. So I, I cultivated this, this knowingness of feedback from going through the process, handling the rejection. And, you know, I've translated this now to all of the companies, all of the different you know, aspects of my life that I have really stopped, understood why that didn't work, why the rejection I was facing actually showed itself, why I didn't make the sale, why did that person not call me back? Why, you know, I started to really look deeper and get feedback. Even if I didn't ask for the feedback, I would internalize the experience to the point where then I could learn from it. And this was huge. I'm telling you, like, I know I'm on a little soapbox here, but this was huge. And if you are actually thinking about how you can become better, like this is how you handle rejection with the internalization of feedback at the forefront. Okay. Now I want to give you four actual tangible tips to handle rejection better. And these are, you know, not rocket science, but it really is something that I even, I even do today. Like, you know, I had, I had just a, a nice little hot streak last week. You know, I had, um, five people book calls with me for an aspect of my business. Um, one didn't show up, one wasn't a good fit, but the three people I did get on the calls with, I went three for three, sold them all three. I didn't get rejected because I learned in the week prior why I did get rejected, why I did hear the no. So this is something that I still do every single day is just internalize the feedback and then iterate and evolve. And it's because of these four tips, I learned how to handle rejection better. So one, the first tip, don't take it personally. If you get rejected, remember, it could be situational. It could be something that has nothing to do with you. It's not like a direct reflection of your worth or your abilities. Oftentimes, it could be something very different. Like I'll give you an example. When I was acting and modeling, one time I missed out on this huge job. I'm talking like a six figure job. And I was down, it was down to myself and another actor. And the reason I didn't get the job and this came out through the casting director was because the client said I looked too much like their ex. That was it. <laughs> That's why I didn't get the six figure job. It had nothing to do with my performance per se. It was just because I resembled their ex. They didn't like that. So I didn't get chosen. And that's really, you know, why I, I don't love that industry because I didn't have full control over my reality. That's why I love entrepreneurship far greater, <laughs> but that's why I didn't get this job. And you cannot take it personally. If you get rejected, don't take it personally. Sometimes it doesn't have anything to do with you at all. And you just really need to recognize that you still are worthy. You still have amazing abilities and you know, you just keep on keeping on. Okay. So that's the first tip. Don't take it personally. Second tip, you got to find the silver lining learning experience. Okay. So every time you get rejected, learn from that experience. Like if you're, you know, going on a date and you wear the same shirt and the same jeans and the same dirty shoes 
three dates in a row and you don't get a second date out of it, maybe you can say, all right, this is valuable insights. I recognize that this outfit doesn't do me justice on my first date. Maybe I should clean it up a bit, right? Obviously that's a trivial example, but you get the point. Like there's opportunities for growth and you just need to make sure that you are learning from the experience, reflect, identify any lessons, and then use them to improve in the future, right? Learn from it. If you're missing out on sales, you're on a Zoom call and you're continuously, you know, losing the sale at the final third or or fourth section of the call, right when you're asking for the credit card or if they want to buy or not, well, maybe it's because your script is off. Maybe because you didn't properly handle objections prior. Maybe it's because you didn't articulate your product or service and the benefits you know, to the degree that would make it an easy no-brainer yes for this person, right? So you can learn from those experiences of rejection where someone maybe isn't buying your products or services and you can say, hey, you know what? Like, I need to tighten up my process. I need to rethink my talk track. I need to go buy Carrie's uh, sales course. <laughs> Shameless plug. But for real, we got a sales course, thehappyhustle.com forward slash sales. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. You define the silver lining, you know, learning experience is huge in any rejection type scenario. So make sure that you are learning. So that's the second tip. The third tip is stay positive. Okay, you got to stay positive. When you do get rejected, do not let that like flip yourself or your mindset or your, your aura into pessimism. Optimism is supreme. And I'm not saying delusional optimist, that, uh, del delusional optimism. I'm, I'm saying stay positive in the sense that you can focus on your strengths. You can focus on your accomplishments. You can focus on, you know, what you have going for yourself, cultivating that optimism and not letting the rejection overshadow you know, what you really are building and what you are doing. It just might not be right for somebody right now. That's the damn truth. Some people will buy your product and services first time. Boom. I'll take it. Let's go. This other people might not, you know, other people might be like, Hey, I got to think about it. Or I need to talk to my wife or, or spouse, or, you know, right now is not the right time or whatever. They might give you reasons that it's it's not a a good fit, but you can say positive. And one of the things I love to throw in when I'm you know when I'm actually selling anything is like truly my life is not changing one percentage point whether you buy this or not. But I do know yours would. And here's how. And I stay positive even if they have some type of negative you know emotions that are, have arisen throughout the conversation. Now you could get rejected from you know someone at the coffee shop that you asked on a date and you can stay positive knowing that there's other people who will say yes to you and you can remain optimistic, right? You could maybe come in second place in a marathon, but you know, there's going to be more marathons and you can train harder and you can learn from the experience. So stay positive. That is legit. Such a, a key piece to handling rejection. Okay. So that's the fourth tip. And then or I mean, that's the third tip, excuse me. The fourth tip is set new goals and take action. Okay, so let's say you got rejected. You can redirect your energy towards new opportunities and goals. And then you can set realistic and achievable object objectives. Like I always like to use the acronym SMART when I'm setting new goals. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. That is how I set new goals and then I take action and I build momentum forward using these smart goals as my lighthouse, right? It's guiding me toward the direction that I would like to go. And when you get rejected, that's oftentimes one of the best, the best times to actually stop and then reassess. Okay, I just got rejected. They didn't do X, Y, Z or I didn't get this opportunity. Let me set a new goal based on new information and make a new decision on how to achieve it. I'll use smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely to help guide me as my lighthouse 
and then I'll take action. I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to wallow. I'm not going to, you know, oh, I'm so sad. I just got rejected. No, fuck that. You got to just get up and get going, stay positive, set new goals, and then take action. So those are the four tips that I like to use that I actually, you know, do every single day when I get rejected. I still get rejected regularly. It's a part of it, guys. But if you want to be better at handling rejection, use those four tips. And I'll re repeat them again. Don't take it personally. Find the silver lining throughout the, the experience, right? And learn from it. Stay positive and then set new goals and take action, okay? And I will just kind of put a bow on all this. It is a superpower. If you can handle rejection, it is a superpower. So check it out. If you want to go deeper into all this stuff, I actually go into my modeling and acting days deeper into my book, The Happy Hustle. You can go to thehappyhustlebook.com and get it while it's still good. All right, y'all. I love you. Handle rejection and use it as a superpower. I hope you had some type of epiphany from this. But regardless, thank you so much for your time. I love you. I'm out. Peace, y'all.